Hey everyone, welcome back to Human on a Bridge. Mike here, and today's video is for the ladies and for the girls, the women of South Africa. This video is all about a specific kind of dangerous man. Not the obvious kind of dangerous man, but one that is a predator, specifically a sexual predator, and uses a kind of persuasive predatory approach rather than a physically violent one. Uh, using kind of psychological tactics and approaches uh, towards a target that they feel or deem is vulnerable in one or another way. To begin the video, uh, first of all, let's start with the basics. Number one, it's not your fault. It's never your fault. No matter what happened, there always has to be an offender, somebody else that has broken the law, that has violated your rights, that has done something that is outside the decent norms of society. It is against the law. So no matter what happened, you have done nothing wrong. It is not your fault. It is not your fault. It's not your fault. The reason I say that is because the system is going to sometimes lead you to believe that it is your fault, that you are somehow responsible for your own victimization. That's, that concept or that process is called um, victim attribution. That's when you attribute the, uh, the attack or blame for the attack onto the victim themselves. Victim attribution itself comes from another belief system uh, called the belief in the just world or a belief in the just world. A belief in the just world means that society and people in general have this insane belief that the world is a fair and just place where good people are rewarded and bad people suffer. And so if you have experienced any kind of suffering, you must have done something wrong. It's a belief system uh, based on perhaps an ideal. In other words, if something in the perfect world, good people would be rewarded and bad people would suffer, but we know this is not the truth. We know it's So let's go down to some basics. Always remember your situational awareness. Your OODA loop, observe, orient, decide, act. There's a full video on the OODA loop and situational awareness if you want to dig into it. And again, the principle of awareness, use your five senses. Okay, tune into what's around you by being in the present mind, remain in the present mind, be alert. Then you can respond appropriately. In fact, you can act before you have to react. Because if you're in the present mind, you have the tendency to see things unfold rather than get surprised when they slap you in the face. So be present, okay? Avoid substances. Avoid substances because we know if you are under the influence of alcohol or other substances, your likelihood of being a victim increases significantly. In alcohol's case, it's as much as 80%. If, however, you are in the presence of someone who is under the influence of alcohol, their likelihood of becoming an offender also increases by 80% if they are under the influence or intoxicated. So avoid substances, remain coherent. Focus on the moment. Remember also that you have to keep perspective. So in other words, look at yourself almost from above and outside of yourself and try to look at yourself as a neutral observer. Uh, rather than have any kind of emotional bias or vulnerability to the person, the situation or your existing state, see things for as they are. Because then you will notice subtle changes in the person's behavior and you will start to feel things inside that are warning you, this is uncomfortable, this is not right. This is someone that on the outside looks right, looks appealing, looks attractive, seems harmless, but actually is deeply, deeply evil. Well, let's talk about the offender. The offender, as we said, is a persuasive predator, a predator that uses charm and persuasion and certain psychological tools that are sometimes also used in the dating game um, in terms of creating some kind of unrealistic 
payback or creating some kind of a relationship, creating some kind of a feeling of closeness, uh, creating a sense or an illusion of trust, all these kinds of tools. And these tools were demonstrated in a book written by a guy called Gavin De Becker. The book is called The Gift, the Gift of Fear. Uh, I really suggest if you'd like to know more about this topic, read the book. It's an excellent book. He will use an, a, a sort of aggressive kind of negotiating style, a kind of forceful persuasion that's trying to convince you of something and, and, and that persuasion will sort of increase in intensity in terms of the symbol or the belief that it's meant to create in you. And they will use their charm and their personality to try to create affinity with you. Especially what they're going to do during that time is they will probably look at you and see you in some way or another as being vulnerable. Perhaps you're alone, perhaps you're lost, perhaps your vehicle's broken down, you're a bit disoriented, perhaps you've just had a breakup with somebody, perhaps you're a little bit under the influence of alcohol. Something's happened or, this, or in, for some reason or another, they see you as there's some kind of vulnerability, okay? And it could just be situational and it may well not even be real, but for whatever reason, that's the, that's the image they get and they're pretty good in their predatory instinct. Pre-incident indicators. Pre-incident indicators are battle signs or warning signs, alerts, that something bad is about to happen. And these warning signs are depicted or portrayed in the offender's behavior prior to the attack. He makes an approach, but it is a staged, systematic approach using very, very cunning, insidious psychological tools to try to drag you into an interaction and based on that interaction or that creation of an illusion of closeness, attack you, draw you in and make you vulnerable. There's this inane belief that people just crack or violence comes out of nowhere. It just happened. No one knows. He seemed like a nice guy. And it's never true. It is never, ever true. Well, in some instances it may be. In, the, in, in incident, incidences where people are genuinely have some kind of a schizophrenic or psychotic episode and do something violent, or perhaps a traumatic brain injury, or perhaps are severely under the influence of some kind of a, a drug. But generally, people have shown violence over time and it's a, as a personality trait, or there will be a build-up towards some kind of a violent event. And these pre-incident indicators are exactly that. They are little steps along the road towards harming you. Usually when you ascertain a threat, you ascertain a threat based on intent, based on capacity, and based on opportunity. Those three factors. In this situation, the attacker is initially hiding their intent. They're hiding their true intentions through the approach that they're using. But if you look very carefully and you're in the present, you maintain perspective, you will notice them. So they are, first of all, charm and niceness. Um, Secondly, force coupling or force teaming, then typecasting, then loan sharking, then the unsolicited promise, and also discounting the word no. First of all, there is a concept that they use which is called teaming or forced coupling. And what that means is they will create some kind of a belief system that you guys are a team, you're buddies, okay? Um, like they'll say something like, come on, oh, we're in this together now. Let me just help you with your packages up the stairs. Uh, don't worry, it's just you and me. Uh, I'm here for you, don't worry. You don't have to call anybody else. Uh, we'll, let's team up and do this. They try to create the illusion that you and them are somehow already interrelated and have some kind of a connection. You're a team, you're buddies. Um, you know each other, you know, it's, it's you and him against the world. It's crap. It isn't true. It is a very clever psychological tool and it is a way of lowering your guard. People might have a very good personality, but are inherently evil. In fact, quite a lot of the time, people 
who are very easy to get on with um, are sociopaths or they have some kind of an antisocial tendency in one way or another. Um, all of us have a little bit of awkwardness in, uh, you know, with other people. We have awkwardness like uh, myself on camera. It takes, takes me a while to sort of relax into it. Some kind of people don't have that. They don't feel that awkwardness, but also they have an evil inside them that wants to predate and manipulate and harm. Um, and this is that kind of person. Outwardly, they might look like a dweeb, quite charming, quite innocent, um, very, very dangerous. Another tactic they will also use is what is called type casting. Type casting is when a guy will say something to you like, uh, you're a bit of a prude or hey, a uh, little bit butch, no? Or oh, you're one of those, um, you know, hashtag uh, feminism woman, you know? They'll, they'll take a stab at you. They'll almost challenge you or dare you. And in doing so, create the response that they were wanting, which is you uh, being rebellious to what you were doing, which is, uh, being safe and falling into their trap. It's a very cunning tool. Another tactic that they will use to create some kind of interpersonal relationship or an illusion of one is something that is called loan sharking. Loan sharking is a, or a reciprocity is another way of putting it, a sort of gross or low example is if you're going on a date with a guy and the guy gets you dinner and he buys you a drink and now for some reason that makes you feel entitled or incumbent or um, feel like you have to uh, go home with him or you have to have sex or you have to kiss him or you have to entertain his crap, whatever the notion is, that is loan sharking. That is, um, that is creating an illusion that you are indebted by an overwhelmingly improportionate amount uh, based on the act that the other person has done. and discounting the word no, in general seem to come at the end of the cycle, which means they are closer indicators to the looming imminence of violence. By that point, you need to have made a plan and you need to be able to get out of the situation you're in. As the unsolicited promise. In this situation, what the predator is trying to do now is because he's getting more and more desperate to ensnare you, he's upping the ante. So what he does now is he uses a very strong um, human approach by promising some kind of a trust or delivery, okay? And it's an unsolicited promise. So for example, he might say, I promise you, I'm just gonna help you with your groceries into the front door and then I'll be on my way. And you've got to ask yourself, well, why is he promising that? And what would a stranger's promise be worth? Especially because he's, he's approached you unsolicited. Okay, and even if you, he was solicited initially, at some point you no longer need that person's help and now he's pushing your boundaries. So the promise is sort of a last chance ditch to create that belief that there's some kind of reasonable trust created between you and And then finally, Another pre-incident indicator is discounting the word no. In other words, if you say no, no, thank you, and they say, oh, come on, let me just uh, drop it here. And you say, no, that's okay. Um, I don't need your help. And they keep pushing that no. That's a very big danger sign. Uh, all right, unless, unless guys know a woman really, really well and we have some kind of a long-term affinity with them, um, and we know that they're just sulking because we've had a fight and, and they're just asking us to sort of help them with the luggage and we've lived with them for years. You know, we understand when you say no and we still want to offer help because we know you, you're grumpy with us or we've just had an argument and you, and you cross. And, and, you know, if we maybe do insist and help you with the groceries, um, it'll be okay, okay, because we understand one another. But you meet a woman for the first time, you offer to do something or you make an approach or an advance, um, and they say no, unless you're a creep, you back up, okay? Unless you, or unless you're really drunk, okay, which is kind of the same thing, um, you back off, 
okay? Because that no is a sacred thing that you never cross, okay? A no is firm, all right? When you say no, you must learn that your no is a firm no. Your no means it's this far and no further. So when a suspect is undermining or discounting your no, that's a very big danger sign, okay? And that is another one of the pre-incident indicators. Thank you for watching and remember that gender-based violence and crimes against women and children are everyone's responsibility. Women, although it is never your fault, although it is never your fault um, when some man is violent to you because they broke the law, if you want a country that is free of gender violence, that really gives equality of opportunity to both men and women in our society, and equality in terms of the law and in terms of their position in society, and in terms of protection and safety under the Constitution, you are going to have to take responsibility for gender-based violence in our country. And I'm talking to you, Nunu, my daughter, and everyone in my family, you cannot let us men be responsible for something that we are responsible for creating. We're the enemy in the situation, quite a lot of us, okay? And though the predominant majority of us are in favor of equality and eradicating gender-based violence, we need you to be in charge of certain policy decisions, of deciding what we start teaching our girls at school uh, so that they're aware of their physical integrity and the sovereignty of their own decision-making, okay? that they don't have to be bound by cultural or um, uh, gender-based stereotypes or anything, but what is best for them and what suits them. That they're exposed to those disciplines and skills that traditionally are held for men and for boys so that they know how to defend themselves. Okay, they understand the use of weapons. They can understand tactics and putting themselves in the best position. They have physical security knowledge so that they don't have to rely on a man to secure the environment. Guys, we have to teach the woman that. We know these things now. You've got to pass them on. The only reason or the only way I knew I'd make my daughter safe is if I gave her everything that I knew uh, would be of value to her in a situation of duress. So I trained her. I trained her. I spoke to her about violence. I spoke to her about what she needed to do. I let her know that I was approachable in any way. I exposed her to firearms training, to self-defense, to psychological self-defense. And she grew up with me, which means um, her dad was a bit of a psycho. So she also had it in her life in terms of security. Uh, if we don't give what we have to, our, for, to the woman in our lives, um, they're going to continue to feel the imbalance of power. We've got to level those playing fields, okay? We've got to level the playing fields, but we've also got to uh, get our boys to be gentle in certain instances, to, to earn the side of being nurturing or understanding or having empathy rather than using force or aggression to articulate their pain and their feelings and to allow each other to express feelings. Uh, we've got to try to get people to understand each other and have more affinity between men and women. There should be no battle of the sexes. Obviously, we're both losing that battle. There's no winners in this one. We have to create a lasting peace, okay? We have to find common ground. We have to work towards each other. We are the foundation of what a lot of us understand as society. The man and the woman create the family, from the family, the community. It's important we get on, and we have to get on on an equal playing field where everyone is represented. I don't say I believe that men and women are the same uh, just because we're equal. I don't believe that's the case. I believe a lot of the time we have innate differences in our in certain personality traits, in certain aspects, in the way we are. That's okay. I don't want anyone to be anything they're not. I'm saying be whatever you are, but if you're a woman, you should have exactly the same opportunity, exactly the same safety and protection at work as the men do, and feel exactly equal in the eyes of society and the law, especially because you are mostly the victims. Guys, thanks for watching. I hope this has been helpful, and uh, thanks for subscribing to Human Unabridged, uh, whoever's just subscribed. Thanks to everyone who's watched the videos and for all the support. Please, if you have any comments or questions or you would like me to cover certain security topics, please put them in the feedback in the comments below. And remember, please to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Stay safe out there.